Hey what's up guys, this is 3D Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. And this is already the second video here on YouTube where I talk about marble runs. Why do I do that? Because I think the topic is just amazing, okay? So you can really go crazy with it. It's also a topic really beginners friendly. So if you just start with Cinema 4D, you can directly have a lot of fun with this one, okay? And on my Patreon, I already shared this marble run base kit the last month in March, okay? But now in April, we want to dive just even deeper into this topic and I want to share with you in different lessons in different chapters how to build your basic kit by yourself okay so I mean you already get this one from me but I want to just enable you that you can build your own toolkit okay so if you want to know how to build curve elements, spirals, ramps, crossing sections like these ones, okay, also beautiful and you need these ones all the time. So you can just see here, I use this crossing section again here and there, okay, if you just want to build something like that, okay, you need these ones. I want to show you how to build angles. I just called it like this one, but basically these ones are just more complex elements. All right. And here I also made another lesson, which is called complex shapes. Okay. How to build complex shapes. And in my opinion, when you know all of these lessons, then you can just build your own toolkit and then you don't need to rely on other guys like me who will sell you a toolkit. Okay. So maybe you just want to say, Hey, I can do all of this by myself. And this is why I want to share the knowledge with you. Also, this is a quite beautiful lesson to be honest. Okay. Where you go from this one to some edge sculpting. All right. And then you get these beautiful details. I mean, just look at this one, how beautiful this element looks like. Okay. I think it's amazing. So lots of cool stuff on my Patreon, but I also want to share some more knowledge here on YouTube with you. So in the last video on YouTube, I already shared with you how you can build a linear element like this one, a really basic rail. All right. But this time let's just build on the previous knowledge and I want to show you how to build a curve element. Okay. So I think this is just the next logical step from a linear element to a curve element. Okay. And just in case you don't know how to do that, this YouTube video will be the right training for you. And after that, you can already already built linear elements and curve elements. But anyway, I think before we want to dive into Cinema 4D, let me just quickly show you a video, okay? All right, and here you can see how smooth the physics will work with my setups, okay? So basically all of these elements, I built them with a low res version for the physics calculations that this one will be really smooth in your viewport, okay? And yeah, you can see you can just build complex structures. You can really go crazy with it and just have fun with it. So I just wanted to prove you that this is just pure fun. All right. So let me also show you this video. I already shared this one with you in the last tutorial on YouTube. Okay. But just see how much fun you can have with these marble runs. All right. Also, the camera movement is really, I think it's beautiful. Okay. So you follow the marble and then you go from the left to the right, right to the left again, zoom in, go back again and just be really dynamic with it. Okay. And I'm pretty sure this is some camera knowledge that I also want to share with you soon. Don't know exactly when, because first I need to share all of these lessons with you on the, on the sculpting and, the, and the modeling. All right. And by the way, I'm also building an advanced marble runs kit. So you already get the base kit, but I also work on a more advanced kit right now. But I already talked too much. So I think we should dive into the Cinema 4D lesson. So this will be simple, but maybe some of you don't know how to build curve elements. Okay. So this will be the right lesson for you. And before we really dive into Cinema 4D, let me just quickly tell you, it would be amazing if you support me here on YouTube. Just ring the bell, subscribe to my channel. Maybe you even want to support me on Patreon so I can make more of these free videos that would just be amazing. But other than that, let me don't waste your time. Let's dive into Cinema 4D and have some fun. Okay. Thank you so much. See you there. Hey, what's up guys? This is 3D Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. And this time I want to show you how you can create different angles for your marbles toolkit. Okay. So maybe you want to create your own. I think it's uh, just not fun enough if you just have linear elements. So of course you need curves, for example. Okay. And you can see for my marble kit, I create different elements here. They all come 
with a medium resolution. So when I press NB, you can see this is medium or I think it's already a bit high, but I just call it medium. And inside of it is a collider. So let me just make this one invisible and this one visible. So you can see all of these elements, they are set up with a collider with a low poly object inside of it, which has the collision tag on it. And collision tag, by the way, you will find in simulation tags. Okay, so this is how I already set up all of these elements. So it was quite a lot of work, to be honest. But this will just give you a fast start. So you have a medium version, you have a high version, all right, with some details. But when you see when I get close to it, it gets a little bit blurry. So this is good for, I would say, this distance. And then I have an ultra version, all right. This will have really a lot of polygons. And you can see this is even sharper on the edges. And then I have this ultra version with the details where I just sculpted in some holes and stuff to make it even more interesting. So these are my curve elements, all right. But now I want to show you how you can create your own curve, okay. So maybe you just want to get creative and create your own asset pack. So let's just do this together. And here I have these two rails. I created these ones in the last tutorial. So you should know already how to do it. So maybe we just focus on the collider here and I will just make these elements visible. Deactivate the extrude object for now. And you can see I just have this simple outline here and it consists of a rectangle. All right. So let's just see it without the spline mask. It's a rectangle. It's 300 by 82. But of course, you can decide these values however you like it. Then I have a circle which is centered in the middle of this line here. Okay. And in the top, I just offset it a little bit higher that you just don't get two lines on top of each other when you make the spline mask. So this is just a little bit higher. You can see when I put it into the middle, it will be like this, but I just move it a little bit up. Okay. And then I put it into a spline mask, B subtract A, and then you will get this one. And then I just extrude it. Okay. So when I press NB, you can see this is my low poly version and you can set up all of these values by adjusting these numbers here. So for example, you can put this one to 15. And when you put it to one, then this would be really high poly, right? But I just go for 15. All right. And then I just go to the extrude and give it some subdivisions here. Okay. This will be necessary if you want to bend it to just have some subdivisions here along the, this axis. So this is the collider object, the small resolution version. And then I have another version of my rail, which has this, this extra polys along the edges to just give me this beautiful lighting here along the edges. Okay. So this is ugly. This is just for the collisions. And this one is what we will see later. All right. And just to be clear, when you go to the caps, you can see I can set up the rounding here. I set it to two. And in that case, I just rounded all of these edges here to just get these beautiful edges. Okay. What a great sentence. So I think for these curves, I just want to make this rail a little bit longer. Set this one to a thousand, for example. Uh, we can also set this one to a thousand, of course. And I think for now, all of this is good. So I can press this C to make these ones editable. All right, just put it out here. And what is really annoying me, I just moved this one over there. We really don't need all of these tags. So let's just kill them. All right, so this is my collider and this is my small res object. I think I can just move the, the collider into it and go to coordinates and put it into it. Okay, that's not what I wanted. So I will just press R to rotate it, turn it 180 and I will just uh, create another color here, something gray for the collider. And now you can see it should lay exactly on top of the other. Of course, you can still go to the poly mode, select this poly and move it just out a little bit because the high poly version has this extra bevel edge here. Okay, so you could move it just here. If you really want to be precise, then you can just go to the other side, select a polygon and just move it more or less here. You don't have to be super precise, but I just do it. Okay, so you can see the small res is inside of the medium resolution and I will just make it invisible, right click on it and go to simulation text and give it a collider body. So just one more time, come on, give me a ball here. Let's put this one to 50, for example. Okay, I think the radius here is 55. So you could also put it a bit higher. I set this one to icosahedron NB, 
You can see the subdivisions. This is just good for a sphere. And A to get out of it, right click on it, go to simulation and put this one to a rigid body tag. And you can see this one is falling inside of it. And because we have a small res collider, this will just be rocket fast, okay? So I could also, of course, just go here, rotate it, put it up here. And then when I just give me more keyframes here, uh, more frames, then you can to see the ball, the marble is rolling down this piece. Okay, perfect. So go back to zero, set the rotation to zero again. And now finally, let's put this one into a curve shape. Okay, so next step would be to just select this element. And you know what, I want to put it into parent first. So Alt G to put it into a null. And now I select this one. And I think I want to select shift. And then I will go to the bend. Shift will help you to automatically put it into the parent. So now we have a bend object here and it is already fitting to its parent. Okay, that's good. But I think the strength is along the wrong axis. So hopefully this will be something like Z. Let's try it again. And there you go. So we already have a curve, right? I want to set this one to keep the length of the original object. And now, for example, put this one to 90. Okay. And there you already have your curve. You can see you bend the medium resolution and the collider. So this is fine. All right. So we would have a 90 degree curve. Let me just hold down STRG, duplicate it, move this one down. And maybe we also want to make a 45 degree curve. Okay. This is good. All right. I really like this one. And maybe you just want to duplicate both of them, want to put it here and now go inside of it. All right, so you could select both of these elements. It just make this one invisible. Or maybe just first select this one element, press T for scale and just scale it to 55. No, sorry, to 50, of course. All right, and when I hold down shift, then you can go in increments, okay? I want to do the same here. Put this one to 55, uh, to 50. Why do I say 55? I don't know. All right, select the band again. Maybe we want to fit it to parent again. Oh no, it's already fitting to it. Okay, that's good. And it is, of course, because we scaled down the parent object and the band is inside of it. So, of course, the band will also shrink down to 50%. All right, cool. So, you will have already four curves here. Okay, that's perfect. And I think this is already everything that you need to know about curves. In a later lesson, I will show you how you can not just create the standard curve with the beveled edge. Okay, this is looking good. So this will be just something that I want to show you later. I will show you how you can make this beautiful edge effect here. Okay, how you can sculpt this one into your objects. Okay, this is just looking so much more interesting, right? So this is giving it this handmade feeling. Okay, I really like it. And of course, I will also show you how you can sculpt this stuff into your into your rails. Okay, so this is just looking more interesting. But of course, from a distance, this one is also working. Okay, they are just a bit more casual. Okay, but for now, I think this is good. And now you know how you can make round elements in addition to your standard rails. And next thing I want to show you is how to make spirals. Okay, so this will also be very interesting. So see you in the next lesson. Thank you so much. Bye guys. All right. And I think this is it. Okay, so this was a really short lesson about curves. I'm sorry if this one bored you because you are already an advanced user. Um, I'm really sorry. Okay, but I just thought maybe some of you don't know how to build these elements and maybe in the last 20 seconds here. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that when you combine different curves next to each other, okay, then you can just build all kinds of different shapes, okay? So this looks just from a graphical standpoint really, really amazing, okay? And I just want you to have fun with this. Okay, so thank you so much for your time. I hope that you will subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be just amazing, okay, if you support me. But anyway, thank you so much for your time. Have a nice day. See you. Bye, guys.